All right, sir. Uh, I will be moderating to this uh, session. I like to share a bit about myself first. I am a second year student in cloud computing and cyber security at Jatkin Infotrain and a plus two student in computer science at Call Sasangi's Kiran Memorial. Now, before starting today's session and handing over to our special guest and speaker, I would like to give a brief about them. A warm welcome to this esteemed gathering as we convene for a profound exploration into the world of cybersecurity under the guidance of an exceptional expert. It is my privilege to introduce our distinguished keynote speaker and one of the honorary members of Center for Cybersecurity Studies and Research, Mr. Hitain Singh, an illustrious figure in the realm of cybersecurity. Mr. Singh brings to this forum a wealth of experience garnered over more than a decade as a visionary and trailblazer in safeguarding our digital frontiers. Currently holding the esteemed position of scientific officer at the National Informatics Center, his journey in cybersecurity has been has been marked by a relentless pursuit of excellence and a passion for fortifying our digital defenses. With a career spanning numerous milestones, Mr. Hitain Singh has been a driving force behind the fortification of security operations centers, ensuring, robo ro ensuring robust resilience against the dynamic landscape of cyber threats. His strategic foresight and proactive approach have been instrumental in designing and implementing cutting edge cybersecurity strategies that align with the ever evolving threat landscape. Mr. Singh's expertise extends far beyond technical proficiency. He is a visionary leader known for his innovative approaches and relentless commitment to enhancing cybersecurity awareness and education. His advocacy for proactive measures and, and his dedication to empowering individuals with the necessary tools to invest, uh, to navigate the digital landscape securely have set benchmarks within the industry. Today, we are privileged to have Mr. Hitain Singh share his wealth of knowledge and insights with us. His guidance promises to shed light on the intricacies of emerging security threats and provide us with the invaluable strategies for mitigating these risks effectively. Let us extend a warm welcome to Mr. Singh and express our gratitude for his presence here today. I encourage each one of you to actively engage in the session, absorb the wisdom shared, and appreciate wholeheartedly in our collective pursuit of cybersecurity excellence. You are all requested to type your questions in the chat box during the session. Thank you, and let's embark on the enlightening journey together. A very good evening to Sir Mr. Hitain Singh. Yeah, hello everyone. So thanks for the introduction, Shubham. Uh, I hope uh, the screen is visible to everyone. Yes, sir. So yeah, so I'll tell you a bit about myself in uh, 10, 12 seconds. So I've been working with uh, National Informatics Center for the past 10 years. And for the last five years, I've been working with the, in the field of cybersecurity. So whatever the information I've gathered, whatever the knowledge I've gathered, I try to give you a brief of it or a gist of it in uh, this 30-35 uh, minute session. Uh, I'd like to tell you that uh, how exactly we are dealing with cybersecurity threats in the government of India, what exactly is our landscape, how exactly we are tackling issues uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So in our presentation, in this session, I would like to tell you that uh, the agenda would be the emerging cybersecurity threats few key challenges that we face on day-to-day -day basis, endpoint security, uh, endpoint security solution, and cybersecurity precautions that we need to take and we, that we need, that we make uh, government officials ensure that they are uh, following those uh, cybersecurity precautions. So I'll just start with uh, what do we mean by security as I think all of us might not be, might be knowing that uh, what when we say security that uh, your mobile handset is secure, your network is secure, your PC is secure, what exactly do we mean by security? So in just uh, a brief uh, to set a benchmark, it's just that uh, it needs to be confidential. It needs to be holding its integrity throughout and it should be available for you whenever you need it. There shouldn't be uh, uh, uninterrupted or there shouldn't be uh, unwanted interruptions in your service. Uh, it should be available to you whenever you want. There could be downtime, but that those are planned downtimes. So, only when uh, your application, your PC, your network, let's just say your PC or your home, if it's uh, under and encompassing all the confidentiality metrics, integrity metrics and availability, if all three of these are met, only then we can say that this thing is, this network is, this application is, 
this computer is uh, secure. Why security is so hard? Uh, we keep on saying that uh, this will be a bilingual uh, sort of interaction. Uh, so when we say why security is hard, we can say that we have so many security professionals. Uh, it's so easy to, uh, we can have higher 10 or 12 more security persons. We can have firewalls, we can have intrusion prevention systems. Why exactly is security so hard? Uh, the issue is when a system and application is uh, designed or uh, it's coming into picture, the motive is to deliver the service. The motive is to deliver the functionality. We don't uh, think about the security aspect of it. We don't think about the security misconfiguration or what uh, the hacker or the, or the adversary may try to compromise it with. Uh, the key aspect is to deliver the functionality. Let's just say, uh, as we all for the past uh, year or so might be hearing about chat GPT, now there's chat GPT-4. Uh, so basically the intention was to give you the functionality, the a large language model that you should be able to type, you should be able to interact uh, with the AI and it will give you an interactive result, search results. And uh, but the thing is then there are something called mal GPT also that you can create a malwares uh, by bypassing the security uh, functionality that has been there in the chat GPT so far. So uh, when uh, uh, functionality is there, there are people who try to bypass that functionality, that the bypass that security measures and to hack it. What exactly is hacking? Hacking is nothing but, but uh, just using the application, the server, the PC to use it uh, unwantedly that the, the developer or the user defined it to use it. It just, the hacking means to use it for it unintended purpose. It wasn't intentionally built to serve that purpose, but somehow uh, we are bypassing it and uh, we are trying to make it work in in the way that we want it to be. That's that's basically in the gist of uh, what we mean by hacking. Uh, then user expectation is that if, let's just say, I have all the security precautionary measures are there, we have the intrusion prevention system, we have the HIPs, we have the uh, endpoint and security solutions, we have the EDRs. So our security is covered. That it doesn't uh, fly like that. Uh, thing is, uh, you are as strong as your weakest link. Uh, it just requires one single click, one single click, a message, a tap on a uh, SMS, a phishing SMS, uh, one single you drive by download, one single mistake that anyone can do, and uh, there will be repercussions to it. The hacker or advisory could get uh, access to your system and it can pivot from there. You might not be an asset. I'm not saying you're not an asset, but you might not be a critical asset to an organization, or you might not be holding or having access to critical systems or critical uh, networks in your organization. By organization, I mean it could be school, it could be colleges, it could be a company, it could be a government sector, it could be an operation, uh, OT environment. Uh, thing is, when uh, they try to uh, have a connection with you, they try to pivot from there. They won't try to exploit you. You might not be the primary target uh, for those adversaries. They tried and you won't even get to know that you have been compromised. Thing is that. Uh, so, and it's not like you were compromised in January 1st and you get to see there's a large amount of data being exfiltrated on the 3rd or 5th of January. The, there's a, something called the reconnaissance. So the uh, adversary will try to study, learn your in, uh, in, in environment and will try to pivot from uh, to people who have the privileges. And from where they can do much more damage to the organization, where they can exfiltrate much more data from the uh, organization. So, thing is, our users' expectations are a, a little too much that we are not supposed to do anything, and uh, everything will be dealt by the cyber security team. Everything can be dealt by the IT team. So, and then there is a lack of uh, awareness. Uh, let's just say you might have all heard about social engineering attacks. It could be fraud also. So I think uh, most of us have uh, seen a series uh, like Jamtara or Mr. Robot, uh, or, or or for a matter of fact, you have seen uh, Asur. There's one one more show. So what I'm trying to say is, it, it's uh, the terminologies, the things. It's already there. People are talking about it. And it's not about the IT professional. There is something called scripties. You don't need to be a uh, very uh, uh, code, uh, you don't need to be technically very sound in some sort of a language to curate an attack. So you just need to have basic information. You just need to, there, there are something called showdown also. So where uh, as soon as a vulnerability is disclosed, 
uh, there are 10 methods to exploit that vulnerability also so it's not that difficult uh, to offense hence as i come to the uh, next point is defense is inherently more expensive so it's more expensive or uh, a cost taking cumbersome to defend your uh, ecosystem and, and and your infrastructure but it's uh, very easy to get a uh, peers to it so it's it's very easy to attack somebody uh, just one one vulnerability is that you forgot to patch just one vulnerability or they they you don't need to even patch it there is something called a zero day vulnerability you there there might have been a zero day vulnerability and you get uh, compromised by, by that and as i told you there are ramping uh, ample uh, cracking tools also so uh, i'll just go through with the basic uh, attack vectors there could be viruses worms I, I i think you might all be knowing about the difference between viruses and worms and trojans and password crackers uh, I, I, ip spoofing technologies ip uh, spoofing uh, techniques band the middle attack port scanner packet sniffer sql injection zero day exploits credential use attack key logger spyware i think you might have heard about the the spegasus and all they are, they are all spyware you don't you don't need to install anything it just require a, a whatsapp call that you don't even need to pick it uh, so and you can get compromise uh, what what exactly you can do so uh, uh, i'm not trying to threaten you but there are certain mechanisms there are certain things that uh, certain practices that you can practice that uh, it will it will make it harder or it will make it easier for you to recover uh from if there is any impending attack or if there is any unfortunate attack or breach uh, in your system gain complete visibility i I'll, i'll explain it to you uh, in detail what exactly i mean by the gain complete visibility reduce attack surface uh, prevent all known threats we cannot do anything about a uh, uh, zero day vulnerabilities because the oem doesn't even know that these sort of vulnerabilities exist so uh, they won't be able to uh, fix patches for you or give patches to you so that you can fix those vulnerabilities because they themselves don't know it then uh, detection and prevention new threats it's threat intelligence so you you need to keep on uh, searching i don't mean you the, the organization uh, need there there's something called red teaming and blue teaming so they need to uh, constantly uh, keep interacting and share and get to the detail of it uh, of all the uh, recent threats which are being used or which are which can be exploited towards a uh, organization or the infrastructure complete visibility i'm coming on to complete complete visibility so how exactly we can gain the complete visibility identify your assets what do i mean by assets assets could be hardware assets could be applications assets could be people working on those applications and using those hardwares how to uh, maintain an inventory list of uh, your assets this is a i'm not saying this is the exact inventory list but this is some sort of a demo invest inventory list you can have a uh, a uh, web server you can have a uh, platforms you can have frameworks you can have uh, db servers and there there could be a technology that you could be working on centos apache jsp struts wordpress uh, they need to have certain sort of a version you, you need to keep a track of the current version on the in the latest updated version which is there in the market when it, when it was last updated so you, you when anything happens you need to have uh, a set of uh, details about your infrastructure what exactly you are having in your system right now then uh, you need to have uh, yeah did anyone say anything okay put your presentation on full screen that's yeah, already full screen uh, is it full screen now is it full screen now Uh, no, so, it's still it's still not full screen. Just a second. I'll share back again. Just a second. is it full screen now yes sir yeah my bad 
So yeah, where were we? Uh, you're gonna have users. Uh, you might be having certain sort of users which might have a different set of roles and different set of uh, privileges associated with them. So you can have a list of all the users, the what exactly are the application they're accessing, how exactly they're accessing that application via VPN or via, uh, let's just say, a lease line or just via Wi-Fi, via internet, or it's in, uh, they are they are user of uh, intranet net, uh, applications only, and what exactly are the ports they are uh, accessing to. You just need to have a list of all the applications, all the ACLs that you have given it to them, so, so that uh, uh, as and when something happens, you need to know who all might have those access that can do the, all this. And who are not supposed to have those accesses. Uh, then it's not an exact diagram, but you need to have an updated uh, architecture uh, of your uh, entire application or your entire server. You need to have, because if you don't have the architecture or uh, design uh, of your entire infrastructure, you won't be able to do uh, the remediation part of it, you won't be able to go down to the bottom of it. What what exactly has happened? So, uh, I'd like to talk about uh, the phishing attacks and spam and social engineering. I'll start off with that with email security. That what exactly we do as government of India? How exactly we protect our uh, uh, clients? Our clients are all the government officials only, as we are also government officials only. So, as you might be knowing, that ninety percent of breaches and 90% of attacks starts from you clicking on an email or some uh, some other links it starts from that that only so uh, i think as you this is a very uh, precise and somewhere back google used to use this terms uh, and conditions this is exactly terms and conditions that were used by google so it says uh, when you user services you give google a worldwide license to use it host it store reproduce modify create uh, derivative works out of uh, the content which you are uh, working with or posting it over there. What I mean by it is, you know, uh, there was a time that just a, a year back only, we used to say that pixel ke jo phone hote hain, they have only one camera and the image quality is so precise, it's better than Samsung ke 4 5 camera jo use kar MI ke 5 camera is right? The pixels camera is very good. Why exactly it's happening is, the, everything is data only. So, uh, you know, you might be using uh, Google Photos. What exactly Google Photos is doing? Google, your all the data, all the photographs that you are clicking is there with Google, and uh, they know how exactly uh, mango ice cream looks in October in a yellow light. They know how exactly a strawberry looks in a daylight. They know how exactly bubbles. Uh, if you uh, if you make some bubbles in air, how exactly they look? How exactly light is getting reflected of them? So even though you click a different sort of a picture or, a, or not that correct version of a picture, they correct it because they know how exactly things need to be done. They correct it and they uh, show you a picture uh, out of it. Uh, do you know, uh, now there is a magic camera that uh, let's just say you're uh, clicking a photograph uh, of a uh, group and few of them are not smiling, few of them are have, the, have their head turned around. You can just adjust it without even clicking it again. So because they know how exactly needs to be done, how exactly it's, uh, will come out, so they do it for you. This is all because of the data that you have provided to the Google or other uh, uh, companies. So uh, our government uh, NIC email provides you uh, with two-factor authentication. There's an application uh, that we use with the uh, application. It's called Covach. It's just a multi-factor authentication. The, the main part is, let's just say, if you're using uh, NIC provided email uh, services, that your data will remain inside India only, inside uh, our data center only. I'm working in a data center and it stays there only. The data doesn't go anywhere from there. But you don't know if you're using Google's data, uh, Google's application, you don't know where exactly your uh, data is going. But here, if you're using critical applications, like I say, there are uh, very critical ministries that do communications. We uh, There has been a guideline from third also that you need to do all the official communication by the official government channels only. You shouldn't be using Zoom call, you shouldn't be using WhatsApp, you shouldn't be using anything. You should be using a government providing SMS. There's, there's a uh, some somewhat sort of a WhatsApp for government officials also. There's a, a mail infrastructure for government officials. There's a VC infrastructure. Everything which is provided by, uh, let's just say Zoom calls or uh, messengers or Google, we have provided to the government officials. So that any official communication might not be going through anywhere else. 
So uh, besides this, uh, it provides geofencing, it provides two-factor authentication. Uh, then uh, I think you might also, you might all be knowing what, how exactly a Google uh, phishing attack works. You just click on a document, you click on a PDF, you click on an Excel. It could be a mouse over also. Uh, nowadays, there are uh, uh, an action uh, or uh, input, a mouse over can also be an input. So when user fail to understand the social engineering trick, they click on that attachment, a rat is installed on their system, a rat is used to gain access to the uh, internal networks, and data is stolen. The, it could be a use case. The data is stolen from the machine. Not it could. They could compromise it. They could deface uh, that website. Uh, this 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 is how a uh, 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 phishing attack works. So I'll tell you in uh, a brief how exactly a phishing attack works. They just say, uh, I. This is this, these are the actual uh, use cases. These are the actual uh, scenarios where uh, they have we have been compromised. We have, or somebody has tried to compromise them. Uh, in, in COVID only. Uh, so let's just say there has a DG has known that there is a uh, agenda or there has been a meeting uh, regarding the covid and you need to download it uh, there has the meeting has been recorded if you are not a part of that meeting you can download the minutes of the meeting so this is just a basic sort of the thing is uh, you don't get phishing mails like uh, now that you used to get 10 years back that uh, arab may there has been uh, prince uh, uh, falana falana ibrahim ke there has been a birthday and he wants to give 9 billion uh, dollar ka bounty or do non million dollar ka lottery to somebody and you have been selected. You don't get uh, those uh, sort of phishing mills. Now, nowadays, you get very precise phishing mills. So that the that, that's a part of reconnaissance. Uh, the attacker will try to study you, what exactly you're working with, who exactly you're interacting with, what are the mails or what are the things that you interact with on social media. So they'll try to curate SMSs, they'll try to curate mails in such a way that uh, you'll be enticed enough to click on them. Uh, is it full screen? Yeah, so this is also uh, one of those uh, phishing mills only where uh, they have been asked to back up their entire data uh, because the screen uh, not visible, sir. Just a second. Sir, some candidates in the meeting are asking you to slow down a little bit. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. Uh, is it is it visible now? Is it full screen? So it is not full screen yet. Is it now? Is it full screen now? No, it's not. not. It must be full screen now. Is it? Yes. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. So yeah. So what I'm trying to say is that there can be uh, various modes that you can get compromised. There can be various phishing mails that are uh, very enticing for you because they're created just for you. These are, these are targeted phishing attacks. These are not attacks uh, or uh, phishing mails that you have forwarded to uh, thousands of official, government officials. They're targeted for specific individuals. There are four or five people that it's very precise. Uh, they know that they're clickable. They know they have relevant information in there. Uh, so they're, they're very uh, difficult to crack it. Then, uh, you know, you get certain sort of a link that when you go to that link, it will redirect you to a page which could not, which shouldn't be the actual page. And uh, you'll ask to uh, give the credentials to it. And when you verify or when you enter it, it will redirect you to the actual uh, mailing site. Uh, but the thing is, in that process, you have given away your credentials. 
when the site is reloaded you will be able to log into the system but after let's just say when the, in the command and control server whenever he got he gets time the hacker gets time you'll see that the abc person has entered these sort of credentials in this mail id and they will retrieve it and try to change it and access uh, those uh, email ids again there is uh, trying to take advantage of your patri uh, uh, patriotism uh, see that there has been a balakot strike and you can see the exclusive pictures from there so this is one sufficient simulation that we have done for all the cso's in government of india so we have tried to uh, there they were, they were supposed to be a meeting here in couple of days and we shot this mail that you need to register in this service structure devas.gov you need to register it and thing is uh, uh, 170 of the cso's uh, clicked it and 146 of them uh, read the mail and sadly 90% of them uh, uh, clicked on the link also Uh, but uh, now we have provided a functionality that as soon as somebody is trying to uh, redirect you to an uh, url which is not there in the mail because the redirection is in such a beautiful way that uh, it looks something else when you double click in it will take you to somewhere else uh, but if the url is trying to take you to somewhere else that it is mentioning in the mail then it won't it will give you a, a alert and it won't allow you to redirect it from there then there is some uh, very uh, great risk of shortened urls so as a shortened urls you wouldn't be able to know what exactly is the domain behind the shortened url uh, as you might be knowing we order uh, nowadays so much that we get uh, let's just say uh, for an example uh, there has been a big billion day sale there has been a flipkart sale new year sale even if you have bought uh, let's just say a, a couple of batteries a couple of smart bulbs you will you'll check i am again assure you can check a uh, five to seven times you were exactly that bulb as is exactly Uh, my product my t-shirt has uh, uh, been so and using that uh, uh, thing only what attacker try to do is they try to curate uh, smss or shorten link in such a way that that your delivery is there uh, and you need you can click on to get the access of uh, the machine or you have your uh, package has been received uh, you can collect it from there so they try to uh, make sure that you click on those uh, urls but the thing is you don't know who, what exactly is the domain we had that shortened urls so we have this internal application there, there could be many uh, applications like this but uh, this is one that we use uh, it is a url expander url check that we will give the actual url uh, in our uh, uh, nic infrastructure similarly there was a case of sql injection uh, i don't like to i would go deep dive into it as i might be having in 10 to 15 minutes only uh, then uh, there was this uh, okay uh, can you uh, spot a fake one in this one this is a very common one few of them are fake can you tell me uh, how many of them are fake or how many of them are real i, I need feedback from your side so i actually saw a post where they mentioned that there is a way to check uh, between some links that uh, if you get the alphabet a you can see some links it is uh, shown as a curve and in some it is shown as a regular text correct uh, correct sir i believe all of them are fake correct every one of them have have a have a correct 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 Uh, these are called masquerading domains so these are like they are trying to pretend something which is not there uh, they are uh, this this was a masquerading domain for the government of uh, india email site uh, when you enter you know uh, there are application nowadays there are the chat gpt only there are they can clone your site you don't need to do anything just need to get the url of the application your url of the site and they'll clone it for you exact right so it's not that uh, difficult nowadays so uh, and you can host it this was a beautiful case uh, this was a, another west bengal police site what the hacker did was uh, made a, a fake site run and recruitment advertisement on top of it and the beauty is uh, he integrated the payment gateway also for them to pay the fee they uh, delivered admit cards also that this is on this this date uh, you are supposed to go to the uh, examination center and uh, you need to give your exams uh, only when they went to that uh, 
school or the center they got to know that there has no there, there hasn't been any recruitment drive from west bengal police uh, so similar was the case with uh, sagarmala project similar sort of a thing a uh, masquerading site or domain was registered and on top of it uh, there had been a recruitment drive in people lost money and uh, this case was registered similarly uh, there is something called uh, sms bombarding you may call it like some sort of ddos attack to your phone uh, have you ever heard about uh, or have you ever witnessed let's just say uh, let's just say on new year's eve only when you have received hundreds of smss and you turn off your phone when you are going back to sleep and when as soon as you wake up you know that there are 100 messages coming to your way and your phone just becomes a brick for 3 4 seconds or you can say uh, you are traveling uh, it's it's a long flight or 8 or 9 hour flight and uh, the network isn't there as soon as you land uh, all the messages all the sms uh, starts to come your way and your phone just for a blip of a second just freezes for a second couple of seconds has anyone witnessed it or it's me only absolutely sir many times it happens yeah correct so using that only uh, an attacker can uh, using uh, multiple tools they can uh, sms that sms link or the sms request can be intercepted and you can change the mobile number in that and multiply or uh, reply uh, that sms uh, request and bombard it with to a specific mobile number it's called sms bombarding this was happening in the cctns uh, project then uh, it's a buzzword uh, excuse me sir yeah sir sms bombarding does serve a purpose or it just for fun it, it serve serves the purpose for the hacker they uh, it's uh, that's what i told you it's uh, sort of a ddos attack on a small infrastructure from on a small web server on a small mobile endset it just uh, uh, utilizing or hacking it way uh, that the developer doesn't intended it to be so if i bombard you with 1 lakh messages you won't be able to use your phone to be very honest for an entire day or so or it, it might crash your phone also if i send 1 uh, lakh messages in couple of seconds to your phone and got so, it sir uh, have you heard about uh, cryptocurrencies so there's a way to earn cryptocurrency it's called mining um, hope you all know it correct yes sir yeah so uh, there was a case uh, i'll come on to it what exactly happened is in crypto jacking a threat actor uh, just pushes a malicious script onto a web server or a, a application and when you browse that application that uh, script can download it onto your browser and utilize your computers uh, cpu electricity computational power so that they can mine those coins and uh, you uh, you lose out on electricity you lose out on money and they'll earn it now i'll say aisa to koi applications hai nahi thing is there are few coins uh, which doesn't require that sort of electricity and that sort of computational power or that sort of uh, verifying the transactions uh, bitcoin ethereum there are big crypto uh, currencies that require a lot of energy a lot of computational power to give proof of work proof of stake but it's very easy or no i'm not saying easy it's it's convenient you can you can mine some sort of uh, coins via your uh, <coughs> uh, pc also so using that only a uh, uh, crypto jacking script was installed in the home page of upsc.gov.in so as soon as people are surfing that upsc.gov.in uh, that malicious script was downloading onto their uh, browsers and uh, whenever they restarting or uh, we uh, uh canceling the browser window the that script was going away so it perishes as soon as you restart your system you won't there will won't be a trace and you won't get to know that you have been compromised also but meanwhile whenever your system is on whenever you are surfing uh, your cpu was being used to mine cryptocurrencies for the attacker uh then there is dns security it's uh, Uh, of prime important to us because dns is like a postman where to go dns will be telling us that this is the site this is the facebook that you need to supposed to go how exactly dns work we have 
around 14 any class dns servers were for the government of india only so as and when uh, you request for a site we it goes through via our postmaster or, or dns servers how exactly it is work it works is you ask for a website it ask a dns nic dns server it will tell you uh, what exactly is the ip of it where exactly you needs to go and you fits the web page from there what exactly is dns poisoning your dns server is poisoned what exactly happened is uh, in your setting there are dns server setting so when your system is compromised and then fake dns or rogue dns entry is made so when you are asking for a web page when you are asking for an application you are not asking the genuine postmaster you are not asking the genuine nic dns server you are asking a rogue dns server they'll tell you that you need to go right 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 you need to go uh, onto a false site or fake site so how exactly it is it will ask for the uh, uh, an application the request is uh, forwarded to a rogue dns which is having the entry uh, a false entry in uh, to the system and it will redirect you to a false site or a masquerading site or a fake site uh, so to prevent that we have made a response policy zone when a response policy zone is not there uh, uh, a, a malicious domain uh, is requested to a D dns server and it will it, if it's not a root, root dns it will ask somebody else and it will fetch you that malicious domain also but when you have an rpc when you have a response policy what exactly happens is we keep a list of all the malicious domains and ips it's uh, because of the threat intel that the government agencies share and uh, i'm not exactly the government agencies but there are a few private agencies also which share government with the uh, intel with the government also so as soon as a malicious domain is requested by a user it will ask the dns what dns will do is the dns will in turn uh, get back to the rpz or the response policy zone it will check whether that malicious domain uh, the the domain request is malicious or not if it's not malicious it will uh, fetch the page to them if it's a malicious request if it's a malicious domain or ip it will redirect to a fixed page it will redirect to a, that we call it a wall garden page uh, it will redirect to a static uh, that the site is restricted or you are not supposed to go there okay. what happens is we can block it also but when we use this sort of methodology we know that this system for sure is compromised that they are trying to go to a malicious site because genuine people don't uh, 90% 90 95% of cases genuine people don't try to go for a malicious site because uh, only when uh, your system is compromised uh, that the user is trying to make connections to some malicious site trying to exfiltrate the data and we get to know that the system is compromised and try to patch it this is our way of finding out what exactly can be what exactly is wrong with the system or what are the systems which are which might be uh, breached or infected this is a sort of way that we redirect it to then you might have heard about ddos uh, what exactly is when uh, let's just say you have a a road on a road let's just say only 10 cars can ply on it uh, let's just say all of a sudden if 1000 cars are <coughs> entering on that road uh, it will get packed it will get jammed nobody will be able to move this is the similar case uh, the application is meant for 1000 people only but let's just say 1 lakh people are accessing that application at that same time uh, it will it's bound to get down uh, there are not genuine requests there anything could be a bot e your mobile phone uh, your uh, internet enabled uh, router your uh, smart refrigerator your smart ac your raspberry pi anything which is having internet capability or computational capability can be used as a bot and it can request or it can you uh, send udp traffic it can send uh, tcp traffic it can uh, it's uh, it can come under a command and control server uh, but we do have a, a technique to scrub out malicious traffic we have a ddos mitigation devices where we see these are not genuine traffic and we try to block that traffic and the genuine traffic can go through as and when when we see a rise or a peak in a average traffic we do certain mitigation steps and try to block unwanted traffic and so that the usability is maintained then we come on to the endpoint security what exactly we tell it to the end users is uh, if you are not an admin user of a system we don't require admin rights all the time 
we require admin rights of our pc only when we are installing something we don't install anything on a daily basis on a regular basis so the best practice is to have a non standard non admin account as a daily driver we should be using a uh, a non standard a uh, standard non administrative account to do your daily tasks because you'll be able to do everything over there just by using a non administrative account you can save yourself from 80 to 90% of attacks because to do something you require administrative privileges of your system if you don't have administrative privileges of a system you won't be able to pivot you won't be able to do damage to your application or to your uh, your pc uh this i call a security wheel of an ic cert these you can take a snapshot out of it don't use pirated that's what we tell you to uh, government officials don't use pirated operating systems don't do pirated softwares don't go to file hippo there is nothing called as free nobody will give you a free word ms office there it will work but it will, it won't be a key it will be a corrupted it would be uh, having malicious software or backdoor entry to work in uh, so that as soon as you uh, deploy as soon as you install that uh, ms office you also maintain a connection to that cnc server so you are also making yourself vulnerable by installing those non genuine cracked version of applications nobody will give you anything for free use an ic provided antivirus clients uh, we want you shouldn't be using free wares you shouldn't be using free antiviruses you should be using uh, enterprise grade uh, antiviruses or edr solutions or uh, uh, epp solutions that your organization has provided to you keep your operating system uh, updated avoid using remote desktop tools uh, like any desk any admin and team viewers and all uh, it will allow an attacker to access your system ensure you have dns and ic provided dns servers ensure you are not using registered government ids on zomato and third party sites because they keep on getting breaches they keep on getting compromised so your email id is also at stake they it can get compromised and then using a reused password it can be cracked uh, don't click on any uh, links sent by unknown users don't use same password in multiple uh, uh, applications or sites Use multi-factor authentication that we have provided via Kavach. Use complex passwords. Uh, don't use shortened URLs. Just uh, have a visibility over exactly that URL could be. Use an expanded version of it. Just just go to uh, Virus Total and check it. What what exactly it could be. This is the basic thing that you can do. Don't download anything except your uh, Play Store and Apple Store. <clears throat> don't use APKs and all. uh and uh, as soon as uh, you get to know something you need to coordinate with an ic cert there is something called cert meta engine is sponsoring and there is an ic cert this is for nic infrastructure government infrastructure uh ensure that all security incidents are reported to an ic cert act on advisories and alerts and guidelines vulnerabilities notified by an ic cert and ensure compliance cooperate with an ic cert provide logs evidences information asset inventory list requested by an ic cert keep an ic cert informed of all the actions taken to mitigate a security incident and any coordination or uh, agency for security incident shall be done through an ic cert only yeah so i'd like to end my session over here if there are any queries you are free to ask me okay. yeah anybody having any query Uh, participants can post their questions in uh, chat box so that uh, mr singh can respond to you uh, the thing is singh, when uh, nobody ask is uh, either they have understood every single bit of it <laughs> or they have understood none definitely so i would like a few questions anything anything it could be technical it could be non technical it could be anything sir there is a question uh, from gaurav uh, that how do you disable power shell so partial uh you in the windows settings only it's not that difficult you, you can you can google it uh how to disable power shell it will give you a step by step guide how to disable power shell it's also best practices to disable power shell so that if your system is compromised uh they won't be able to do much uh 
you, you should also disable remote desktop RDP to uh, connections also, because you might not be using RDP on a daily basis, but some people can have access to your system and without you being knowing also. So it's a best practices to uh, just disable RDP, disable uh, PowerShell, use non-administrative uh, accounts, anything else? Uh, sir, there is uh, sir. Question, uh, that, uh, why do websites like tinyurl and bitly uh, allow malicious websites to be hosted because they do provide some sort of functionality also and you don't know whether something is malicious or not if i haven't committed any crime as of now you can call it malicious only when uh, people report it as malicious they, when you see but have, i think most of us has heard, heard about virus total so there are uh, 10 12 15 30 uh, search engines over there only when majority of them say that this is malicious then only it is categorized as malicious otherwise there is a reputation is non malicious only if you haven't done any crime it, it's not malicious but when uh, and there is something called dgs also domain generating algorithms also uh, it's not like you have uh, blocked a domain so that uh, let's just say we talk about uh, i don't know whether how how many guys you uh, download nowadays from using pirate bay and these torrent sites but it doesn't mean that one torrent site is blocked so you won't be able to use torrent there are domain generating algorithms that as soon as one site is blocked it uh, gets transferred to another domain so it's not that difficult yeah anything else sir i have a question uh, uh, on that slide where you were talking about that dns poisoning uh, yeah. uh, that uh, nhs established a system where which can prevent dns poisoning so no, that it cannot so prevent DNS. DNS, it cannot prevent DNS poisoning. Uh, we uh, encourage or we make sure that your DNS is NIC provided DNS only. Uh, if your system gets compromised, uh, an attacker could poison the DNS. So there is no way of mm. uh, bypassing the DNS poisoning. If your system is compromised, they can uh, uh, compromise your DNS server. They can poison it. Yeah, but sir, uh, the system makes sure the software makes sure that the uh, the URL you are uh, re reaching out is not malicious or something. Sir, uh, okay. is it somewhat? Uh, I'll answer you. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, is it somewhat similar to a VPN that your no, tra no. traffic is redirected? No, no, it's not. It's not VPN. VPN is basically you are uh, you have a secure network. Uh, let's just say there is an application hosted inside or uh, a, a local network only and sitting from outside you want to access it that's when we can uh, use uh, come to use there's another VPN when you it can be used uh, you want to use a proxy server to pivot or to hop from one thing to another because that can also be used but that's not a VPN How exactly a VPN works it provides a tunnel a safe tunnel to a, a internal network that's how the basic functionality of a VPN, uh, besides uh, giving you a proxy server. What I was trying to tell you is, yes, as soon as the DNS is poisoned, we do have endpoint security solutions. It will give you an alert that uh, the D first, uh, as soon as a request or a change of DNS is, is uh, requested, or somebody is trying to change the DNS, we get an alert. We'll get to know that something malicious is happening and we inform that uh, user also. So, but what I'm trying to say is if somebody is not having that endpoint solution, then there's a uh, little to no way that you can ensure that it might not get a uh, uh, poison. You need to look out for it. Mm, okay, sir. Yeah. Couple of uh, sir, questions. So with that, what is the difference between uh, external penetration testing and external penetration testing? So internal penetration testing is from within the IP pool of uh, given to me by my network. From my uh, internally, uh, my IP is whitelisted. My IP could not be whitelisted, but I'm trying to penetrate application within the internet only. Outside uh, penetration from outside is you're outside my uh, IP pool. You might be using an Airtel network. You might be using any other network. You try to penetrate me from outside. So there are a couple of levels of firewalls. When uh, at, there, is, there is a DMD zone. So there's an outer firewall. There's a DMD zone. There's an inner firewall. And there are applications uh, running all throughout it. 
So you need from when you are penetrating from the outside, you need to bypass all these a uh, couple of firewalls also. But when you're inside, uh, uh, you are uh, bypassing only a single wi uh, Wi-Fi only. So it's difficult to penetrate from outside than to penetrate from inside. So pen testing from outside always gives you different results, gives you different vulnerabilities, and gives you different uh, sort of reports compared to the internal uh, pen testing. Okay, sir. So, so the question is that uh, what would be the first step if we get to know that one of the systems we are using is compromised? You need to isolate that system first. You need to inform your IT uh, uh, cell. You need to inform certain or an IC cell if it's a government PC. Uh, then uh, uh, you need to coordinate with uh, agencies and make sure things are not deleted from there. You, by isolation, I mean you uh, isolate it from the rest of the network so that it doesn't pivot from there and take an image out of it, of your, of your uh, let's just say if it's a window, you can take a VHD image of it so that you can give it to a, a forensic analyst. Yeah. Did that answer? Yes, sir. So there is another question from Yash. Uh, yeah. Email spoofing used by hackers on banks without MARC compliance. How does this all work? I didn't get you. Yeah, your voice uh, broke a bit. Uh, so the question is, is spoofing used by hackers on bank on banks without MARC appliances? Uh, how does it work? Just let me see the question here. It's there in the yeah. chat window, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, can you please uh, type it again, the question? It was shared on 818. 818. By Yash. Uh, email spoofing used by hackers on banks without DMA compliance. Um, so, uh, thing is uh, they can get access to somebody else's mail also they can get access to people or somebody has uh, compro somebody got compromised they can use that email also uh, i'm not sure what exactly uh, to answer you over there i'll get back to you in person if you'll allow me Yeah, anything else right now? Uh, so, uh, sir, one last question. That uh, email spoofing used by sorry, the question was, uh, how can we ban slash block any specific protocol in our system? They can obviously uh, add the firewall itself. There are next generation firewalls nowadays, so they can block uh, or uh, there are host based intrusion prevention systems that you can uh, block uh, specific protocols, you can enable specific protocols. There are tools for that right now. There are next generation firewalls, there are uh, host-based intrusion prevention systems. So you can restrict a uh, few protocols and you can allow certain protocols also. Okay, thank you, sir. So I would like to uh, finish the session and I'll try to uh, try to and take leave from you. It was a wonderful meeting you guys and uh, share uh, whatever experience I've had. Uh, thanks a lot. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. So, it's very good time. So, ladies and gentlemen, as we conclude this enlightening session on emerging security threats and safety mitigations, I'm honored to express my heartfelt gratitude to our esteemed keynote speaker, Mr. Hiten Singh. Uh, your expertise, depth of knowledge, and captivating insights into the ever-evolving realm of cybersecurity have been truly invaluable. Throughout our time together, Mr. Singh has shed light on the intricate nuances of cybersecurity threats and offered proactive strategies to mitigate these risks. Your dedication and passion for fortifying our digital ecosystems are truly commendable. Your contributions today have undoubtedly broadened and pers our perspectives and equipped us with essential tools to navigate the complex cyber landscape.
I also extend my sincere ap appreciation to all our participants, professionals, students, enthusiasts who have actively engaged in today's session. Your thoughtful questions and contributions have made this session remarkable, insightful, and dynamic. Your commitment to staying informed and proactive in tackling cybersecurity challenges is commendable. Cybersecurity is an ever evolving battlefield, and the knowledge shared here today serves as a foundation upon which we can build stronger defenses. Let us not only apply these insights gained, but also continue our quest for knowledge and collaboration in safeguarding our digital infrastructure. I encourage everyone to maintain an open dialogue and remain engaged with the CFCS to our Center for Cybersecurity Studies and Research. Together, we can further our understanding and fortify our collective defenses against emerging threats. In closing, I extend my best wishes to each of one of you in your cybersecurity endeavors. Let's continue to be vigilant, adaptive, and proactive in securing our digital future. Thank you once again for your participation and dedication. Let's forge ahead together towards a more secure digital landscape. Stay safe, stay secure. Thank you.